How incredible is that intro? All right, everybody, welcome and hello to a brand new series. Very excited today to be getting this one started. It's been coming for quite a while and the 1st of March 2021 is when we get our Pentagon Challenge underway. We're gonna pretty much run this one right up until the very end uh, of this Football Manager 2021 cycle, depending on how long that is. If we actually get the five trophies well in advance, maybe we'll jam another save in. I'm not entirely sure. It purely depends on how long this actually takes as a challenge. I think it's gonna take quite a while, so hopefully we can find through as much as possible but there's a whole bunch that we need to get through today we've got a new club that we need to find we've got tactics that we're going to work out squads to introduce all that sort of fantastic stuff and i'm gonna do my very best to edit this down to be kind of like a manageable 15 to 20 minute video so hopefully hopefully i do stick to that but if there's anything that I've missed, anything that you guys want to see, drop it down in the comment section below. Let me know over on Twitter. I will happily bring up any detail that you guys want to better look at in the next episode. But let's not waste too much time. Let's jump straight in because we've got a bunch that we want to try and get through. So as you guys can see, starting pretty much a new career game. You can see this horrific burn victim here on the screen is my face capture, but we are going to be starting a brand new career. Now, there's a couple of different ways that I've looked at this. I thought about potentially starting in Australia with Melbourne City, my local club, who I'm a member of. I thought that made a little bit of sense, but I don't think that's in the true spirit of a Pentagon challenge. I think you really do need to kind of like start at the bottom and start with nothing and see how you go from there. So, so what I'm thinking is I'm going to load up all of the Asian nations. We're going to start with Asia first. You guys will have seen on the graphic at the start of this episode that we've got like little kind of shadow versions of all of the different continental competitions. We're probably going to go, I think, Asia. Africa, North America, South America, and then Europe. By the time we get to South America and Europe, it'll probably be mostly regens, which is fine. That's no big drama. We might have some like fading stars depending on how long it takes us. But I think we're going to start in Asia first. It is the closest geographical location to me. So I think it makes sense to start there. And the Asian Champions League will be like a very difficult one to get. So it could be that we end up like managing in India or something like that and then do well domestically and then get a job in Australia and then do well in Australia and get a job in China. And then we finally get a crack at a Champions League, such as the disparity of wages and all that sort of stuff. But we are going to load up each of these nations, which are the Australian A-League, the Chinese National First Division and Chinese Super League, the Hong Kong Premier League, the Indian National Football League, the Indonesian League Two and League One competitions, the Malaysian Premier League, the Singaporean Premier League, and the K-League and K-League Two in South Korea. We're going with the large database. We're going with the start of the season because I will be unemployed at that particular time. We're going to use not use real fixtures. We're not going to add key tasks. We're going to disable player attribute masking. The reason I do that is because this is a long-term save. Really, you just have to scout a guy for like three or four times. And if I'm going to be unemployed for long stretches, I just want to be able to see what players are like and if they're any good and all that sort of stuff. And of course, prevent use of the in-game editor. Not that anyone would do that anyway, but we're going to hit start game. And we're going to see how we go. 12 leagues from eight nations and a large database. It will start in Australia in December, 2020. And that's where our journey gets going. Hopefully because it's December, 2020. Some of those leagues, divisions that have started already earlier in the season, maybe there'll be jobs up for grabs. I don't really know. We're going to see how we go. All right, now character profile or a manager profile. Sean in the mix, of course, getting all that information in there. This is the tough one, and this is the one that I think is going to hurt the most. Starting unemployed, that part's fine. It's this part here, like all that hard work I've done to like boost up my reputation and whatever else. It's going to drop back to no coaching badges. It's going to drop down to Sunday League Footballer. And the only trait really that I'm going to put anything into is man management, just because all those conversations can be so difficult if you don't go in the right direction. And I've got one point to a coaching attribute. Let's go with tactical, I guess. That seems like a good way to do it, but that's the smallest I think I've started with in any series on the channel. It's going to be a challenge for the first few years, definitely. So we get underway and because there's no club job, very, very bare and barren social feed, but we are going to immediately jump in the job center. And we're just going to look at manager jobs. We're just going to look at club jobs as well, given that we are going after the Pentagon. We don't really need international management at any point. Now, there are a few vacancies. There is a vacancy within Australia, which I think I might apply for. There's some Chinese first division clubs, which I don't know if I want to do that. Maybe I'm going to try and hold out and try and get a uh, higher tier job. Hebei Fortuna, I think, is a very, very big team. Who have they got in their squad? Uh, this is the different Paulinho. I thought for a split second it was going to be the Paulinho that has been at Barcelona and Tottenham and places like that. They would probably be pretty decent. They probably have a fair bit of cash. Maybe we just start with these top tier to teams in China, see if anything comes through. I'm going to be honest, I don't 100% think I'm going to get Chinese Super League jobs straight off the bat, but 
at least it puts us in a position to uh, kind of go after it a little bit. The Newcastle Jets job could be interesting. I do know the A-League relatively well. Okay, ignore that. It was unsuccessful. Didn't even get an interview. They're going to continue looking for a new manager. Same with China. So I think it does mean that we're going to have to go a little bit lower than perhaps what we initially wanted. I haven't applied for these first division jobs. Let's just apply for them and see what happens in China. Again, I think if I'm not getting Super League jobs and not even getting interviews for them, these uh, jobs in China are going to be difficult. Okay, I've immediately not gotten this one for MGB Hohot. Uh, ZB Kuju will come back to me in a little bit. All right, so we are a couple of weeks ahead, the 11th of January now. ZB Kuju, who I've applied for, they're the only job still open. Everyone else has applied someone. I've applied for it, but haven't heard back from them at any point, which is maybe they're like glitching out. I'm not entirely sure. Or maybe they have something unique about them that actually prevents me getting the job. But as things stand, the uh, job center's looking a little bit bare at the moment. Maybe we have to give it a bit more time. Maybe we'll just kind of come back at the start of each month. Maybe I'll jump forward to the start of February, have a look at the jobs before we jump back in. And this could be a while before we actually find something. This could be a hell of a challenge. All right, so jumping forward a little bit further, it wasn't the start of February, it's the 20th of February. It's the first real movement we've had. That Kuju job, I think, is like glitched out or something. I'm not sure why that won't go away or why they won't hire someone, but that's fine. That's no drama. If you do know what the story is with ZB Kuju, by all means, let me know on Twitter or drop it in the comment section below. Uh, but we have got two new jobs that have opened up. Felder United in the Malaysian Premier League. We're going to apply for that one and see how we go. Brisbane Raw is also available in Australia. That one would be decent. Shout out to any Bris Vegas fans watching. They've both received the applications and haven't immediately rejected them. That I'm taking as just being a positive side. I just want to get an interview, really. Like That's the main part that I'm looking at. I had a feeling it was probably going to take a year for us to get one, but hopefully it speeds up. We have got a question here as well. You've been unemployed for some time now. What are your plans for the immediate future? I'm going to cast a wider net. I know there's always work to do, and I'm just going to stay positive in the media just so everyone remembers that I'm out there and looking for work. Patrick Hisnormbo is under pressure at Melbourne City as well. I would love to get that job. I don't think I'm going to get that job, but that would be a good one to get. It'd be insufferable for you guys watching me talk about my own team, but at least I've already got the kit. That's, uh, that's good for the content. All right, here we go. We're just forward in March now, but Felder United have offered a job interview. They play in the Malaysian Premier League. It would be pretty low starting, only one reputation as far as the competition is concerned or the club is concerned. We're going to attend this interview. So they've said, hello, Sean. We've invited you along today so we can put forward our vision for the club and allow you to suggest any alterations for us to consider You should we should we decide to hire you. Uh, I'm glad you give me a chance to talk with the club. I am glad for that. I was starting to panic that we weren't going to get any interviews at any point. Can you explain why you appear to be in the running for a few jobs right now? I'm just trying to forge ahead with my career by any means necessary. We parted with company with our last manager much sooner than anybody would have anticipated. Can you offer assurances that won't be in a repeat of that? Uh, I've an intention to commit to a long and successful career with this club. Sure, why not? Can you assure us that you would have no problem securing the backing of your players, an area our previous manager struggled considerably in? Were we to hire you? So I think he must have lost the dressing room and I don't think that would be a big issue. But again, I don't have like man management skills, so that's a bit of a challenge. Can you tell us what changes you would like to make to the size of our backroom team? I wouldn't need to expand the size of the support team. I probably should have looked at how big it was before I made that judgment. As part of our recruitment process, we are willing to allow you to request changes to our current backroom staff setup. What size budget would we be looking at to make these chance changes? I'm just going to say I'd require a small budget to allow me to make some modifications before taking charge, and that would be it. So they've got a club culture of signing players under the age of 23 for the first team. That's fine with me. It's favoured, not required. Work within the wage budget is required, so that's fine. Mid-table finish in the Premier League and the FA Cup reached the third man minimum, but it's only like kind of two levels of the four in terms of preferred top half finish 2022 work towards gaining promotion to the super league win promotion to the super league by 2025 so they are a second division club i did not realize that the premier league was below the super league that is interesting uh let's just say we'd agree with that he wants us to battle against relegation and I'd say I can avoid the drop if hired we'd be willing to provide you with a transfer budget of 48,098 oh sorry 48,000 pounds what do you think of the proposed figure I'd happily work with a slightly smaller transfer budget. Uh, let's work with that. Would a proposed wage budget of £9,688 per week be suitable for you to get the job? I'll just say I agree. Let's go with that. Do you have anything for us to consider? Should we decide to hire you? I have no request to propose. That draw thing still closed nicely. We would like to extend our appreciation to you for attending today and we'll be in touch to inform you of our decision. So we've gotten an interview. That's a massive step forward, I feel. 
And don't panic, I'm not gonna make you guys listen to every interview, but I thought the first one, we might as well kind of go through it together. Okay, and here we go. Following your recent interview with Felder United, I invite you to suggest any changes you would like to make to Felder United's backroom staff setup. So I'll tell you what, it's not bad. They've got an assistant manager, three coaching staff out of four. So they've got another space there to get another coach in. That's good. They've got a fitness coach, a goalkeeping coach, and an already just like generic coach. We could find someone else to come across and help out with that. They've got a head physio. They've got a physio underneath them and space for another one. They've got a chief scout. I haven't got any scouts beneath that, which is fine. I don't really care too much about scouts. Director is football, head of youth development. They don't have sports scientists, under 21 and under 19 sports scientists as well. Under 21's physio, they don't want to have that many. They don't really want any under 21's coaching staff as well. So I'd just leave it as it was, to be honest. Like, let's not try and rock the boat too much. I haven't been off of the job either, so that could all be mute. My Brisbane Raw job application is unsuccessful. So Felder United have offered us a contract, £975 a week, 45K wage budget, oh, sorry, transfer budget, 9.75K wage budget. I'd say that transfer budget's all going to become wages relatively quickly, but let's jump in and have a look at negotiations. I'm just going to ask for an even £1,000 a week. Actually, you know what I'm not going to do? We're going to jump back out and let's put let's put this into Malaysian Ringgit. If you're going to be living somewhere, you're going to have to get used to it. So Ringgit... 240k, 52k per week. That's going to be chaos for me to try and remember what the name of the uh, currency is. But let's just go 5k per week. So let's drop it down a little bit. They give me a nine-month contract. All that club culture cuff stuff that we just spoke about. They're very happy with that. So let's see if they're going to offer us the job. They have indeed Federal Land Development Authority United, which I didn't realize was Felder was an abbreviation, have hired in the mixer. It's a okay looking kit, the orange and purple in the back there. Interesting stuff. We're going to see how we go in the second division of Malaysia to start with. We are going to continue, I think, to keep an eye on different jobs as they come up around the world. But just to recap, signing players under the age of 23 for the first team, working within the wage budget, avoiding relegation is the expectation for this season. And who knows, maybe if we actually get through it and start this season well, we can kind of push on a little bit. There's a few players in last year's of contracts, including some very good players, arguably their best two. Expectations are to avoid relegation. That's fine. We can deal with that. Tactic, I will do off screen in a moment, but let's have a quick look at the squad. The squad's not super deep. Let's call a spade a spade. So it's got... 19 people in it. Is there anyone in like an under 21 setup we could maybe look at? Yeah, they've got a few. Let's put all of these guys up into the senior squad just to have a quick look at them. So no one in the under 19s. So that helps our depth out quite a bit. Now, what's the story with these guys? One and two star players. We don't really need any one or two star players. That's not really what we want to be doing. So let's add them to the unwanted list, sell at any price. Assistant manager can take care of that one. Move to the under-21 squad. But let's have a look at these two star players, the two foreign players that they've got in the squad. Nikola Raspopovic. Let's go with that. 31-year-old Serbian central defender. Looks to be very good for this division and level. Has played a little bit in Europe. This is his first real venture into Southeast Asia. And Nicolas Velez, Argentine number 10 slash forward, which could be interesting. So we've got a good center back and we've got a good forward. That is always good to have. Maybe he plays as like an, a, an attacking number 10 and we try and get the most out of him that way. We will have a look at some tactics and stuff and what we want to try and do in a moment. Let's take all these guys off the transfer list until we've decided what we want to do with them. And let's take this guy off the loan list. So that would give us a squad of 22 people. We probably have some duplications. We've probably got some shortages. I can't see a left back anywhere here. So we're going to have to have a look at that. What I might do is quickly off screen through the magic of editing, go and have a look at the squad, maybe adjust a couple of these players in and out and then also put together our tactic uh, and then magic of editing. We're going to jump back in and I'm going to show that to you guys before we get started with hopefully the first game of the series. All right, so there's there's stuff we've got to work on, obviously, but the two big ones is that they've got in their squad here nine central defenders, which I didn't quite notice the first time that we looked at it. And the worst part is like they haven't got any that are like particularly high potential or anything like that. None that are like really ready to be playing football at the moment outside of Raspopovich. So we're going to jettison a few of these guys. I think we're going to keep Azar, Maslan. We might keep one high potential one here in Sik Zambil, who's 21, and then Ras Popovic, which means these five central defenders are going on the transfer list. They've got no left back at all, like not one in the entire squad. I thought maybe one of the center backs could potentially play left back, but no, apparently not. They've got three central midfielders. They haven't really got a proper number 10. They've got one guy that could potentially play on a wing here, Bobby Gonzalez, who's 37 years of age. I'm probably going to use him as an inside forward, I think, on the left-hand side here just to try and get something out of him. 
Pressure's going to be on Velez. Now, I kind of don't really know now if I should be playing him as a number 10 or up front because he's the only person with enough individual quality, I think, to get us the goals throughout the course of this season. So that might be one to keep an eye on. They do have another four strikers on top of that, though. So I'm going to try and keep this one here, Azar, who doesn't look too terrible at 22. And then they've got one here, Mood, Siami, Zamri, who's only one and a half star now, but has four and a half star potential at 20 years of age. The other two we are also going to add to the unwanted list and sell them at any price. But it means our squad is incredibly threadbare. We've really only got a group of 15, which means I've got some work to do now in the transfer market. So we desperately need a left back. We need some wingers as well. And I think we probably need some midfield depth at centre mid anyway, because the quality just isn't necessarily there. But before I go away and do that scouting and try and bring some players in, here is the tactic that we're going to go with. You can see here the Pentagon challenge or the Pentagon 4 2 3 one because it's in kind of a Pentagon shape. If you just look at the midfield and the forward and not worry too much about the rest of it, that's where my head was at trying to do it. 4 2 3 one obviously it's a little bit pressing. It's very aggressive, very attacking. We're just going to try and outscore most teams, but I've tried to keep it as basic as humanly possible as well. Most of these player roles are based on the players that we've got and what I want them to do. So trying to get the most out of guys like Raspopovic, trying to get the most out of guys like Velo, that's going to be key and critical for us. Everything else just Super basic, like fullback, central defenders on defend. I've gone with a sweep keeper on attack because they've got a keeper that can actually do it. And I'm fascinated to see what that'll be like. I'm going to try and find a decent ball winning midfielder because none of the midfield can tackle at the moment. And Mazai to help out and get in the half spaces. And I'm trying to get some inverted wingers to cut inside and join the attack here. We will see how that goes. And I'm going to go with a pressing forward up front as well. So we've got two versions. We've got an attacking version here, which is we're going to be our default. We're really going to go after it in games. And then I've also created, similar to what we did with St. Pauli, this possession based version which is slightly shorter passing. It's a little bit lower in tempo. Let's say we're 2-0 up in a game and we just want to kill off the last 30 minutes. This is what I want to try and go to. Something that's a little bit deeper, a little bit more possession based. Let's just try and keep the ball and run out the clock and go from there. So this is kind of our time wasting tactic. Still on attacking. I just want to get that out there as much as humanly possible. We are going to be attacking at all times, but this one's a little bit slower in its build up play to hopefully try and keep possession a little bit more. And you know, like if we're in possession, we can't really uh, give the ball up. The challenge is going to be a lot of these players are aren't great technically and aren't great tactically either. So we will see this could go out the window relatively shortly. But Magic Vetting, when to jump forward and identify some transfer targets, thankfully, we have two days before we play the game against Johor DT who are a very big side in Malaysia. It is an FA Cup third round fixture, which is great. It means we have met our requirement to make that stage of that competition and we don't have a league game for a couple of days as well. But Magic Vetting, when to jump forward to that now. All right, so we've got a couple of trialists in. None of them are particularly good, and we've still got no left back. I don't know how to solve that scenario. So I'm currently looking at the loan market to try and get maybe a couple of loan signings in that can cover at that left back position. But there just doesn't appear to be depth anywhere in that position. Like the quality here is like, it's worse than Van Arama South if you're looking for an equivalent save type. They're a bit rough. And then I've also realized Johor DT are currently first in the Super League. So they're top division of the top flight. So look at the depth in this squad that they've got. They've got like Malaysian players, Japanese players, Kosovian players. Then Krasnicki is currently playing in the A-League with Newcastle Jets. He's part of their squad. So like they've got some real talent available here. I think they, they might be one of the bigger teams in Malaysia and one to keep an eye on in the future. But we're going to see how we go. We're going to be absolutely threadbare for this one because we haven't got like a full squad of players to pick from. I'm trying to get rid of all these players in the reserve team. We've had one bid come in for one player and that's pretty much it. Here's a left back as well. So you know what? We might actually have to actually play them this game. So this is the scenario that we're left in. There are some rough players out there on the park. I'm just trying to get the most proven talent out there, so it's going to be Hashimudin in goal, playing as that sweepkeeper on attack. He can actually do the role, which isn't terrible. Uh, Raspopovic will be the captain and leading the line alongside Maslan. Safi at fullback, but he's going to leave shortly. Hopefully, we'll be able to get someone in. Mode Fauzi as the wingback on the right. I'm actually going to move him to be a wingback on attack. Idris will be the ball-winning midfielder, even though he's not super comfortable, but he's at least got like four-star potential, so we'll try and get him out there. Jamaluddin will play as a Mazai alongside him. Velez plays at the 10. A lot's going to really be determined by how well he can do. Gonzalez, who I think is their like most experienced forward, the 37-year-old we spoke about earlier, he's going to play as an inside forward on the left because I've just got no other wingers. We've got no right winger at the moment anywhere in the entire club, which is crazy. I'm going to put this guy, uh, Mode Kechik, out there. He would be playing in midfield, I think. 
ahead of one of these two. Actually, you know what? I think we might move this around. Jamaluddin can't tackle at all. Ketchik can't really tackle at all either. You know what? I'll leave it as it was. Ketchik can play out on the right-hand side. Inverted winger on the right. And Zamri, this young guy, only one star, one and a half star current ability, but four and a half star potential. We're going to try and get him out there playing as a pressing forward. He's got some decent finishing and traits. He's okay physically in terms of his ability to run around. So that's why I'm giving him the nod, even though it's only one star. To have two players out there that are one star and one that's only half a star, not the greatest, but I guess this is the bottom, the start of the series. We're going to see how we carry on and uh, how we turn it around later on throughout the course of this one as it continues. Finally got four on the bench, two of which are centre backs. One's a midfielder slash fullback. So really, we're just going to kind of try and hope this one isn't a disaster and we don't get beaten by double figures, uh, given the strength of this Johor Darrell Tazim team. I'm going to say we're underdogs here. That suits us down to the ground. I'm going to do it assertively. And I don't speak Malaysian, so I wonder if any like different language barriers have come through there. We're going to hit pause because I've got to update all this stuff. We're just going to go to 2D Classic from here on out. Key highlights, though, we are going to put those in 3D so that you guys can see the goals and everything. And here we go. We do kick off to start the Pentagon Challenge first match. We've immediately coughed the ball up here and the highlights continued, which is a concern. But thankfully, we do manage to make it out of the first few minutes without conceding. We've made it five minutes. I think that's pretty decent. In some of the other games, there's a couple of teams that are like 2-0 up already inside the opening 15. There is a goal kick here for Johor. Long ball forward to Safi, who's lost out to Cabrera. Raspupovic comes across to him, and Cabrera with a hell of a finish. Gonzalo Cabrera with a wonderful, wonderful strike. We're going to check this one out in three dimensions. And I do expect us to lose this one heavily. Like, I don't think I've had enough time with the squad. I don't think the tactic's good enough to really be handling teams of this quality just yet. I don't mind our kit, though. That all orange is pretty cool. And the blue is extra. So Hashimudin doesn't get his angles right. To be fair, though, Cabrera absolutely rifled that one into the top corner. So Johor have got a goal to go ahead on. We've given up possession in midfield here from the kickoff. Long ball forward. Hashimudin goes and clears it. He probably could have picked it up there. It was inside the box when he kicked it. Velasquez. So they've gone with a bit more of a international front three. Cabrera again here near post finish. So now it's starting to get a little bit scary, the amount that they are tearing us apart. You can see here in three dimensions, Velasquez, really good cut inside, brings the ball all the way across, slides Cabrera in behind, and again, he goes near post. Hashimudin cannot get his angles right, which is a concern. We're going to have to keep an eye on that as the games continue. 20 minutes in, Fernandez with the corner. Flick on there by Azin. There was a man on back post at Safi. Thank God we're getting rid of Safi and hopefully bringing in a better left back because I don't know how he hasn't cleared this one. We'll check it out in three dimensions. Fernandez, good near post ball. Adam with the ball back across and Safi just watches it go past him. It wasn't moving at a particular rapid pace, but, you know, that's fine. This is, I guess we have to hit the bottom. We have to see how terrible we are before we can get any better. Throw in here to Velez, flicks it on. It's the first time we've really had an attacking position. Nobody goes anywhere near the ball, and Cabrera, who's on a hat-trick, is allowed to run it forward on the right-hand side. Just stand him up, boys. Thankfully, he puts it straight at Hashimudin. First real save we've seen from our keeper. Through 30 minutes now, long one forward into midfield. Catch it does well to bring it down. Now Idris plays it out wide right. We've got an overlapping fullback here as well, if we can find him. Ball back towards back stick. It's cleared away by Johor. If we can get a goal, I'll take that as being a huge win. Uh, and a long ball forward from Idris is claimed by Malias, the Johor goalkeeper long one forward Velasquez knocks it down to Fernandez switch out there to Fernando brought down stops it dead from a crossfield switch we don't have players that are able to do that Cabrera's gotten goal side again and again would you believe it's a near post finish for Gonzalo Cabrera we might have to put Gonzalo Cabrera on our shortlist he might be a bit of a superstar in Malaysian football that we're going to have to keep an eye on that's the touch there on the outside of his right foot he brings it down from like a 45 yard switch just rolls it back to Cabrera who's absolutely having a field day and then Safi cannot get anywhere near him. Raspopovic can't get across either. Hashimudin again. You'd think after the first two, he'd maybe think to guard his near post, but he hasn't quite gotten there yet. We're going to leave it on attacking, and maybe we'll go uh, back to our more possession-based style in the second half, just to see what happens. Throw in here on the left-hand side, Safi into Gonzalez. Ball towards back stick. Catches is there, and we've actually clipped the outside of the post before it goes out to a goal kick, so we've created something. That's good. I can take that. I can work with that. I can build on that over time. But at halftime, we are 4 nil down. I'm going to say I expect to see a much better showing from you. No one seems to care except for Muslan. And let's switch this up. Let's go to the out. Let's drop our intensity a little bit. Let's just try and get everybody out there and comfortable on the ball. And there's an immediate highlight here from kickoff. This could be double figures still. 
Ball comes forward with Cabrera, who's already got his hat trick. Southie has just gone straight through him and caught him. It's going to be Fernando, I think, from the penalty spot. Not a great start after the second half. I, if I wasn't selling Southie before this game, I definitely would be doing it now. And he sends Hashimudin the wrong way, and that makes it five. First goal of the season for, I think, the Spaniard up top, Fernando. And it's a good penalty, to be fair. Sends the keeper the wrong way into the side netting as well on its way through. Decent effort from him. But this is the level we need to get to. These are the sort of teams that we need to be beating if we want to get to the top of this division and into the Champions League to uh, hopefully win that competition. Who knows if we will still be at Felder throughout the course of that time, though. Good ball in here, and we've pulled a goal back. Bobby Gonzalez gets one. Awain Kechik, who's filling in for us on the right-hand side. First goal scored in the series by one of our teams. Kechik, who's not a right winger, does quite well. Crosses a good ball across there. Gonzalez, first time finish. Maybe the keeper could have done a little bit better with it, but I'm going to take it as a goal and something to work with. I don't think there's a comeback on or anything like that, but a little bit of character from the guys, and that's good. We're going to go demand more with 30 minutes remaining. I'm not going to make any subs. Ball out here to Ketchik again, who's done very well to keep it in. Right-hand side. Loses out on the switch. Velasco is going to come forward now. Idris needs to go to him. He's our ball-winning midfielder. Velez, ball over the top. Maslan does well to bring it down and play it across to Raspopovic. Now Jamaludin, ball over the top for Zamri, who has gotten goal side. Can he find the finish? It's a decent effort. Straight out Marlius, though. And so far, second half, things are 1-1. I'm probably going to have to make some changes in a moment. We're going to go demand more with 15 minutes remaining, and then maybe I'll make some changes with about 10 minutes to go. We've not done too badly. 5-1 after being 4-0 down at halftime. That's not horrific. So let's just go by condition here. Our striker is really struggling. But you know what? I'm going to leave him out there. We're just going to have to go by what we have available. We've got a central defender, so we might take Maslan off, who's not played terribly. We've got a fullback here that can come on for Fowdsy. We'll do that one. What can he do? He can be a wingback on attack. We'll go with that. Why not? And then sort of switch out keepers. Yeah, why not? Let's give this other keeper, who is the number one as far as the squad's concerned, Mode Muhammad Muhammad. Let's give him a chance and see how he goes. And then let's also just throw out one more demand more shout in the last 10 minutes. 5-1, I'll take that against arguably the best team in Malaysia, particularly for a side in the lower division. Ball's pinballing around here. It's coming out to Azar, our right fullback. Can we get it back in? Out to Ketchik, who's been busy on that right-hand side. Idris, now Velez. Switch out towards Gonzalez. Back post again. We've got another one, 5-2. So we've shown a bit of character here. And maybe this other formation, this possession-based style, is a little bit better suited to the squad that we've got. Still attacking. But we have actually turned the game on its head a little bit here in the second half. Velez, great ball over the top. That's what we need from our superstar players. And Gonzalez, good half volley, finds the finish. And he seems to be kind of getting a hang and on this inside forward roll on the left a little bit earlier than what I thought, which is fantastic to see. So at full-time 5-2, definitely a lot we can take from that as well. I'm not going to get too upset with them. I'm just going to say... Can't fault your effort. Nobody expects us to win, but you gave it everything. And they all seem demotivated somehow. Okay, so this is the challenge with not having any man management skills. Poor finishing cost us dearly, apparently. So apparently we had a lot of chances and just didn't take him, but that's fine. We'll, we'll leave that one out. Gonzalo Cabrera, keep an eye on him. 32-year-old Argentine. If you're in Southeast Asia, go and have a look at him. He loves a near post finish. But I think that's actually going to bring us to an end for today's episode. So we've gone through a whole bunch of stuff. We've gone through a new club. We've got a tactic. We've got a squad that we've got to work with. We've got a lot that we need to improve with that squad. But there's still quite a bit to be excited about. And I'm very excited about it as well. Now, as always, guys, thank you so much for watching. That is the part that I appreciate the most. If you want to celebrate, you know, this new series getting started, drop a like on this video. It helps get higher in YouTube search results when people look for Football Manager content. You can also subscribe to the channel to be kept up to date on all of our future videos throughout the course of the year. Also, go and check out the Reserve team as well over on YouTube. I do a whole lot of content with them. We've got a Wednesday night Twitch stream as well for Football Manager content. If you want to see more stuff like that, there's a lot of fantastic things going on in Australian New Zealand football in the moment, and I'm thrilled to be involved with all of it. So, so go and check out all that stuff. But like I said at the start, I just appreciate you guys watching. As always, I've been Sean and I'll see you all again in the mixer.